Now that you've seen how to build a REDCap project and how to get data into REDCap, let's take a look at how to get data out. To get data out of REDCap, you're going to want to go to the Data Exports, Reports, and Stats page. First, let's take a look at how to build a report so you can look at a subset of your data. To do this, you'll go to Create New Report. The first thing you have to do is give your report a name. Then, you'll select who is able to see your report. All users who have access to reports, only specific users. The next step is to decide what items you want in your report. There are four different ways to add a specific variable to your report. The first is to simply choose an entire instrument. Second, you can use the Quick Add feature. Here, you just check the boxes of which fields you want in the report. You can pick items from the drop-down menu, or you can type in the name. If you want the fields to be in a different order, you can always drag and drop until they're in your preferred order. Next, we can add filters. For example, I may not want everybody in my project to show up in the report. Perhaps I only want people who are older than 18 and younger than 55. Live filters allow you to use multiple choice questions to look at subsets of even this group. So for example, maybe I'll want to be able to switch back and forth between people who liked the picture I showed and people who didn't. Finally, you can choose what field to order things by. By default, everything's ordered by the record ID, but I can change that. and add more options. And I can choose if they're in ascending or descending order. I choose Save Report. And then I can see the data I've selected. You notice that everyone is in the age range I supplied, and that people are listed in last name in ascending order, and then first name in descending order. I can use the Live Filter to look at only certain subsections of the data. With either my report or with my entire data set, REDCap provides some basic stats and charts I can use. I'll find these on the Stats and Charts page. I have the option of looking at the data for the entire report or for just a specific record. For text fields, it'll simply give me the N and tell me if any data is missing. For number fields, I'll get the min, max, standard deviation, the sum, and the percentile breakdowns. It will also provide me with a nice graph I can use that shows me the distribution. With multiple choice questions, it will show me the answer distribution among the choices and let me know how many different unique fields have been selected. I will have the option to also view the data as a bar chart or as a pie chart. And if I want to, I can download the image. Finally, I can export my report, or on the main page, I can choose to export my entire data set. There are several different formats I can use to export my data. Like we've said earlier, REDCap works extremely well with all the major stats packages. So I can choose to download it as SPSS, SAS, R, or STATA. If I choose this option, I will be given a few different files to download. If I download them and run them in the order that REDCap tells me to, it will format my data and import it into the appropriate stats package. I can download it as an XML file if I need to. And then I have the option to download it as a CSV file, which I can open in Microsoft Excel. There are two different CSV options, raw data and labels. Raw data will give you the variable name, so the short DOB instead of date of birth, and it will use the coded values on things like multiple choice questions. Labels will give you the full question written out, when is your birthday, 
And with multiple choice questions, you'll get the label on the, for the answer choice as well. Two packs a week, one pack a week, etc. As a general rule, we recommend that you always download the raw data. It's what you'll use for the analysis portion of your project, and if you're doing any cleaning and re-importing, it has to be in the form of the raw data. REDCap can't import things as labels. So if you download it as labels, clean it up and try to re-import it, you'll have to reformat your entire data set as the raw data anyways. There are also several de-identification options. If you don't have access to export the full data set, some of these will be pre-checked for you and you won't be able to change it. You have the option to remove all fields that you've tagged as an identifier. You have the option to hash the record ID field. We recommend that the record ID field never be identifiers. However, if you do use an identifier for the record ID field, you can hash it so that the record ID is an unrecognizable value. You can choose to remove any unvalidated text fields in notes and XA boxes, leaving you with just quantitative information. Or you can choose to remove date time fields. You also have the option here of shifting the dates in your date time fields by between 0 and 364 days. The amount shifted will be determined randomly, but all the values within the same record will be shifted by the same amount. You'll still be able to calculate date differences within a record, but no one will be able to link, for example, a specific appointment to a specific person. When you've made your selections, you just click Export Data and export the prepared file. That covers the basics of using a classic REDCap project. Next, we're going to take a look at how to set up surveys within a project.